Tell me that this not happened to your history, your ancestors. Read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Did that not happen to you, sir, your, your ancestors? You had a wife, and your slave owner said, you know what, I want your wife tonight. Could you tell him no? No. This is what God promised was going to happen to us. Right, right. We were kings, and God said we didn't follow his laws. These things were going to happen. Give me verse 42. Bring it out. 41. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them. For they shall go into captivity. Could I tell my master I didn't want my son out there in the slaves, in, in, in the field? Right. Right now, if we mess up right now, do the, do, do the government not send them people in there to come get your kids from you? These are prophecies that God promised were going to happen to us. Right. Read verse 46. I'm going to show you that it's still supposed to be going on this day. Yeah. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. How long is forever? Forever. That means today we'll still be going through it, right? right. He said these curses were going to be upon our seeds forever. Read. Because thy service not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of a heart for the abundance of all things. How do we get to this land? Give me six days. How do we get to this land? They brought us here. How? Both. What mode they of transportation? Us, huh? By oh, boat. What, what kind of ship? Slave ship. Slave ship. Were, were they comfortable ships? No. Exactly. Let's see if that prophesies in the Bible. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Okay, he said he's going to bring us to Egypt again with ships. Remember, we left, we left Egypt out of bondage. Give me that in uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. We left Egypt because we were slaves in Egypt. He said he's going to take us back to Egypt, which was bondage by ships. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt to us meant bondage. It was synonymous with bondage. Now right. read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Right here he said the Lord going to bring us to bondage again with ships. He was claiming Egypt, but Egypt was synonymous with bondage. Right. He's going to bring us back to slavery with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. What happened to us when we got off the ships? What happened to us when we got off the ships? We were sold. We were sold to enemies. Read that verse again. Hold on, she got a question. No, I just have questions about this in general. Um, I actually have a close friend who's an Israelite. This is what this is, right? Come on up, I can't out here. No, I have friends that are Israelites. This is okay. religion. Well, just believe. Um, I was asking, she refers to any person who's not native, Cuban, so pretty much like Native Americans and the Spanish and the like, so we're all supposed to be the same, the children of Israel, but she calls a white folks, is she? Esau. 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 What, what exactly does that mean? That's who they are classified in the Bible. All the names we go by now were the names that the white person gave us after he enslaved us. Yeah, he changed the names of everything. So was disease one of the curses? Who? Disease. Disease? Yes, that was one of the curses. Give me that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 60. 61. Okay. What goes 60 to 61? Moreover, he shall bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and thou shalt cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee and thou, until thou be destroyed. I didn't understand why I heard leprosy was one of the diseases, like the major disease. I didn't understand how a person of color can get leprosy if it wasn't a disease, like it's a curse or it's a Say that again. Like, okay, my friend was trying to describe to me like leprosy. It's a disease that African Americans contract more than like white people, but it's supposed to be one of the diseases from the curse. I don't understand why are we cursing. Because, because we didn't keep God's law. All of the diseases were uh, in fact, we just read you. He said he's gonna give us the disease of Egypt, then the diseases not mentioned in Egypt. So all the diseases we're going through is because we are hard headed. Okay, That's so not. the curse is for us. People the curse of, that, give me Amos chapter Israel. three verse one. I'm gonna show you clear as day. Three verse one. Amos well, three verse one. This is why we're going through what we're going through, and other people can do it and they don't go through what they, what we go through. We're gonna show you that. The book of Amos, chapter three and verse four. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You 
truly have I known of all the families of the earth. What did he just say? You only have I known. He was talking to Israel. He said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Read. Right. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. So therefore, he's going to punish us. Not the other nations. He's going to punish us because he only gave his laws to us. Did you know that? Right. Surah 38 15. Give me Surah 38 15. These, these are the things that the churches are not, are not teaching our people. It's a, it's a. <laughs> the book of Sirach, chapter 38, and verse 15. He that sent it before his maker, let him fall into the hands of the physician. Who is the physician? The doctor. The doctor. So the Bible tells us quickly, if, you, if we sin, if we don't know who, gave the, who were given the laws. So if we sin, which is breaking the laws, we're going to fall into the hand of the physician. So dealing with sickness is only dealing with us. We are the ones that's going to suffer because we were given the laws. That's why we come out here every Sabbath to wake up our people to tell us, tell y'all the sin that y'all are in. Give me Ezekiel chapter 3 verse um, 17. Bring it out. She had a question. What's your question? Yeah, what's our religion? What's our religion? Come on, sure. Yeah, I'm just saying, um, It's more than Ten Commandments. Because yeah. if it was just Ten Commandments, homosexuals could get in heaven, right? Right. Yeah. So you got to think about that. Who told us all these lies we believe? The, the same people that enslaved us. Right. Yeah, they don't want us to keep God's commandment because God don't come back and fight for us. Pagan gods, pagan gods, or any other gods, other So, so what's your question? What well, I was, I first asked, you know, what was your religion in the whole sense of well, Christianity is, I mean, my parents are Christian. Like, evidently, they're different. But the, the most high, the creator, what do y'all refer to them as? Okay, we, we're going to answer both of them questions. Now, she asked, what religion are we? God gave us laws right, uh, as a heritage. Read the book of Sirach, chapter 13, 17, verse 11. Bring it out. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for heritage. For a heritage. This is what God gave us. White man gave us religion. He gave us Baptist, Pentecostal, and all this other stuff, not even understanding what those words even mean. So God gave us laws as a heritage. So if we keep these laws, we will thrive because we will be obedient to God. And that's actually, you think it's a coincidence? Like a heritage, like a livelihood, like a way of life. Also, according to who, who were your people before slavery? See, you don't even know that. That's knowing your heritage. Your heritage is knowing who you were and knowing what your people actually practiced before you. I want to say something real quick. You're doing good. I'm going to give it right back to him. Religion simply means to constrain. It's a Greek word. The root word is religio. That means to constrain. Now, what he just taught you, that's correct. The Israelite man, the Israelite woman, that's who y'all are. You are Israelites. Now, our religion of our forefathers was the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Now we're going to go to a scripture to prove that. Read what you got. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 2 and verse 18. Listen close. Now therefore, come thou first and fulfill the king's commandment, like as all the heathen have done. All right, so at this point in time, the Israelites, that's us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we were under the Greek captivity. From the Greeks came the Romans. From the Romans came what? The United States of America. All right? Read on. Yea, and the men of Judah also, and such as remain at Jerusalem. So they are trying to get us to do what? To bow down or what? Um, become heathens or become Greeks or to start serving their laws, their custom, their religions. All right, read. So shalt thy and thy house be in the number of the king's friends. All right, so we can have a friendship with the king or be allies with the king of Greece. Read. And thou and thy children shall be honored with silver and gold and many rewards. And that's what you see today. What you see with uh, Beyonce, Jay-Z, with all of these famous people, when they consult to the king or the president or the, the ways of religions and policies of America, right. they get what? They get possession, they get reward, they get fame. Right. Read. Verse 19. Listen close. Then Mattathias. Then who? Then Mattathias. Mattathias. He was responsible of leading a revolt against the Grecians, meaning this. He saw his people, the Israelites, in slavery. He said, you know what? I'm going to stand up and go back to the religion of my forefathers. Read. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice. Read. Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion. So he's saying, though everybody is under Greece. Read. Obey him and fall away everyone from their religion 
of their fathers. Meaning what? When it comes to the other nations, you got the Ishmael, which are the Arabs. Their religion is what? Islam. When you got uh, Krishna, the East Indians, they have their religions. Everybody on the face of the earth, every nation and kindred have their own beliefs. Right? Read on. And give consent to his commandments. So they say, you know what? To hell with what I serve, I'm going to follow the white man. That's, that's right. what you see today. Right. All right, but this was before time. But read on. Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our father. Read that again. Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our father. Walk in the covenants of our fathers, which is what? Our forefathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's and the right. covenant was what? Keeping God's laws, That's statutes, and commandments. Right. Right. Read. God forbid. Do what? God forbid. God forbid. Read. That we should forsake. That we should what? That we should forsake. Read. The law and the ordinance. The law and the ordinance, known as what? Our religion. Our religion is the what? God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That's, right. That's, That's right. what constrains us. Now, let me touch on something. Give me Leviticus 13 and 30. Right. Now, 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 now I'm going to show you what constrains us from being different than what? The Greeks or the Americans? Go ahead. Just what, what book are you reading? That was, I'm so glad you asked. That is the Apocrypha. So this is some homework for you, sis. Uh -huh. So the Apocrypha was removed from the original 1611 canon in the 1700s by the Protestant church. Why did they from do the that? Bible? Yeah. The six, so when you, uh, you can Google or go to a bookstore, get you a 1611 Bible, that will have the Apocrypha right in the middle. It was always a part of the Bible until the late 1700s, okay? Now listen close to this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and verse 30. So we're reading out of one of the first five books of the law, which is called the Torah, all right? Read it again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and verse 30. Read. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight, Deeper than the skin, uh -huh. and there be in it a yellow thin hair. A yellow what? Thin hair. Read that one more time. A what? A yellow thin hair. One more time. A yellow thin hair. Read the first part of the verse. And if it be in sight deeper than the skin. The first part of the verse from the beginning. Okay. Then the priest shall see the plague. Shall see the what? The plague. Jump down to a what? A yellow thin hair. A yellow thin hair. Let me ask you this. Is a plague a good thing or a bad thing? You say what? You say bad, right? So read it all the way through for the sisters. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and verse 30. Uh -huh. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, uh -huh. and there be in it a yellow thin hair. A yellow thin hair. Like the hair. There you go, sis. There you go. Now, sis, you are, you are an Israelite. Why? because that just resonated with your spirit, sis. You understood what the law just said. A plague is something that's bad. A yellow thin hair, when it comes to the word blonde, that's a French for, for yellow. Right. That's all it is. Now, Proverbs 3 and 31. You know? Check this out, sis. That's not our natural hair color. Right. right. But where do we learn it from? Think about what we just read about in Maccabees about the Grecian captivity. Everybody said, to hell with our ways, to hell with our religions, we gonna do what the white man do. Read Watch up. what the Bible says. So how come we have people of color who are born with natural Is I, that just kind of the mix? I like, I like what you're bringing out. Check this out. Read this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Uh -huh. Envy thou not the oppressor. It says, envy thou not the oppressor, meaning what? Who has the many over us right now? It's a so-called white man. We know that. But the scripture says what? Envy thou not the oppressor. It means don't chase after what they do. Right. right. Read. And choose none of his ways. And do what? And choose none of his ways. And choose none of his ways. So when my sister asked the question, what about people who are naturally born like that? Hey, it's natural. It is what it is. It is what it is. If you are naturally born like that, you have such something called albinos. Right. Albinos comes from what? Two sets of black parents. Right. All right, so if that's how the Most High God made them, that's how he made them. Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 3. Bring it up. How somebody was made, that's up to the author of beauty, and that's the Most High God of Israel. Bring it so up. if he made them like that, that's how it was supposed to be. But in this situation, it's not the same. All right, read that. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13 and verse 3. Read that. With whose beauty? With what? With whose beauty? Read. If they being delighted took them to be gods, uh -huh. let them know how much better the Lord of them is. The Lord of them is. It's talking about the Israelites. Read. For the first author of beauty. The first author of beauty. So it can't be Donna Karen. It can't be Tommy Hilfiger. It can't be... Uh, 
Dolce and what a Cabana, whatever it is, all that good, all that garbage. Cause that's that's late, that's new in the earth. It can't be them. Read. For the first author of beauty this is have close. For the first what? Author of beauty Read. have created them. Have created them. Who created us? The most high God of Israel. So he's what? The first author of beauty. Right. So let me ask you something. If the most high God created the Israelites, we have what texture here? <laughs> Natural, not this, not that stuff in your head, you're real here. Yeah, no, so I, I, I asked, I was like, so it's a sin here, to wear weave? Is it a sin to wear weave? There's no scripture that says that. Right. that there's but a sin. It's not it's but not that right there, yeah, that's a that's a plague on your head. <laughs> I didn't say it. I didn't say it, did I? I didn't say it. We went to the. Right. So uh, read what you got. No, God, give me that in Daniel uh, 7. Now, when it comes to the Most High God, if He created the Israelites, right? And he said, this is the first author of beauty. Remember in Genesis 1, 27 through 29, he said, let us make man in our image, right? Now, in our image means what? Those people that he made had to look like him. So what texture naturally is your hair? Naturally. It's going to be like what? Woo, right, right, right. Just like my hair. All right, just like everybody standing here right now. Read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. Uh -huh. I beheld. To the thrones were cast down, uh -huh. and the Ancient of Days did sit. When it says the Ancient of Days, that's referring to who? The Most High God, because he has no beginning nor end. Right, read. Whose garment was white as snow, uh -huh. and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Read that again. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. So a lot of people say, hey, nobody's ever seen God. Daniel saw him. Right. He saw, he saw what God looked like. What did Christ look like? God. The most high God of Israel, so the, the creator of heaven and earth. You say who? You, you say what now? No, it's not true. That's not true. Now, I want y'all to direct your attention to these two pictures. That's right. Now, that's what we're here for, sis. We are here to help. Give me that in uh, Isaiah 49 and 6. Watch this. Now, as you look at these two pictures, one has to be a lie, right? One has to be a lie. So we're going to read this verse and then give me that in, what is that, John 720? As the scripture say it. What's that? 738. So read this verse and then give me John 738. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 6. Uh -huh. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob. To do what? To raise up the tribes of Jacob. To raise up the tribes of Jacob. How do we do that, sis? Sisters, we are raising you up, teaching you who you are, right. what God looks like, right. what Christ looks like, right. your true nationality according to the scriptures. Right. All right, watch this. John. Okay. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 38. What's going on, brother? You can pay attention to Read what you got. He that believeth on me. So who's speaking right here? Jesus Christ is speaking right here. Read it again. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 38. Uh-huh. He that believeth on me. So the scripture said, he that believeth on Christ. Read. As the scripture hath said. As what? As the scripture hath said. As the scripture hath said. Now, she said was um Jesus a made-up thing for Christianity. No. I, don't forget the thought. Give me Matthew 1 and 21, and then give me Luke 2 and 11, and then Revelations 1. All right, watch this. Was Jesus Christ a made-up thing for uh, Christianity? Not at all. Not at all. All right, read that. The book of Start at verse 1, actually. Verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ. His generations started from what? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, all the way through his lineage came the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. That's right. right. All right, jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. Uh-huh. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. You shall call his what? Name Jesus. What does it mean? For he shall save his people. For he shall do what? Save his people. It's a title. Jesus means, it's a title. That's all it means. It means that he will save. Read, read uh, Luke 2 and 11. Watch this. Luke 2, 2 and 11. So now we're giving you the sense of the scripture so you don't have to ask these questions like, why is this, why is that? We're just going to go to the Bible and prove it to you. Right. All right, read that. The book of Luke, chapter 2 and verse 11. So where does Christ come from? What, where do you get Jesus Christ? Where do you get that from? Read this. For unto you is born this day in the city of David 
a savior, which is Christ the Lord. There you go. So it means what? Jesus Christ, the anointed savior. That's all it means. That's all right. Matter of fact, before you get revelations, give me John 14 and 6. Bring it's it up. very important that you do not deny the, the Messiah. Right. Because that's the only way to the Father. Right. All right, read what you got. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Uh-huh. Jesus saith unto them. This is out of the mouth of our Lord, Savior, Jesus the Christ. Read. I am the way, the truth, and the light. Read. No man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. Read that again. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me by me. So if you deny Christ, you deny the Father. That's right. Understand that thing. Now, let's find out what Jesus Christ looked like according to the scriptures. Bring it out. Bring it out. All right, read what you got. The book of Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were like were white like wool. So it say, wait, read that again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Doesn't, it, doesn't that sound like somebody that we just read about? Who does that, who does that sound like? Well, we just read about somebody else who had woolly hair. Who? Saint Louder. God, the Most High God, exactly. Wait, give, so me that, cool. give me that in John fourteen and nine. Confused again. So, okay. so the Most High and Jesus Christ, two separate people. Right? Two separate right. people. Okay, That's right. Right. See, wait, wait, wait. I, hold on. Say, say your statement again. I want you to say that again. Watch this. Say it again. The Most High. Uh huh. And yes. And you say what after that? You said exactly, what say exactly what you said after that? You said, you are no longer confused. Well, yeah. You're no longer confused. Give me John 8 and 32. Right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. they both look like, once the father, once the son. Exactly, once That's the father, right. once the son. Know that, but I'm just thinking, you said, they the, did call God, who called God? Daniel. Daniel called God. Uh-huh. But then that was the scripture, but I thought that was the scripture. No. We'll go over it again. We'll clear it up. So in Daniel the book of Daniel 7 and 9, that was Daniel. He saw in the vision. He saw what the Most High God looked like. Okay. Now we're in Revelations 1 and 14, reading about how John saw the Jesus. Messiah, Jesus. Okay. And they looked alike. Okay. Now, I want you to read uh, Revelation 1 and 14, then John 14 and 9. Watch this. The book of Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 14. So we're, we are over here teaching what Jesus Christ and the Most High looked like according to the scriptures, okay? Just in case you wonder what we teach, read that. His head and his hairs were white like wool. John 14 and 9. Okay. This is what Christ said. Because we just read in Daniel 7 and 9 that the Most High God had what kind of hair? Woolly hair. Read this. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou known me, Philip? Read that again. Have I been so long time with you? So he's saying, have I not been here this long with you? Christ walked over for 30 years. So he said, I've been with y'all this whole time. Read. And yet hast thou not known me, so, Philip? So he's saying, have thou not known me? Because he asked the question. He said, hey, what does the father look like? That's what he asked him. Read. He that have seen me. He that have seen the Messiah. Read. Have seen the Father. You ever heard of the term like father like son? Child, you look just like your dad. That's exactly what we read in the scripture. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Go back. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. But this time, who is he talking about? Read verse 13. Verse 13. Uh huh. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Look at this picture. Mm -hmm. Read. One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Who is that? Jesus the Christ, That's free. Right. Clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paths with a golden girdle. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So his head and his hairs were white like wool. The head on his hairs, I mean, uh, the hair on his head and the hairs on his face were white like wool. Read. As white as snow. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Give me that in Genesis 49. Why was that? So, you know? anybody ever been to a family reunion or a cookout with your family members? They sipping on some strong drink, and their eyes start getting real glossy and red, right? But a lot of my family have yellow eyes. Right? You say yellow eyes? Yeah, a lot of the drinks in my family have yeah. yellow eyes. Let me ask you, have you ever seen like the light red or the dark red? You ever seen? So that's that's what we're going to read in the scriptures, all right? We're going to speak God's words. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 12. Uh -huh. you know? His eyes shall be red with wine. His what? Eyes shall be red with wine. Why? Luke 24 and 44. Because the prophets wrote about the Messiah. That's right. What do we read? Who wrote the book of Genesis? Moses. He wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So when we read in the gospel, the Messiah who came to the earth, 
That's what they prophesied would come. Right. When John the Revelator saw the vision, he saw the same thing that the prophet Moses saw, right. that the prophet Isaiah saw, right. that the prophet Daniel saw, right. that King Solomon saw. That's right. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 24 and verse 44. Read that. And he said unto them, uh -huh. These are the words which I spake unto you uh -huh. while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And where did we just read that? In Genesis 49 and 12. All right, let's go back to uh, Revelation 1 and 15. Bring it up. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 15. Uh -huh. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now, what color is brass? Brown. Brown, exactly. Now, sis, y'all both got open toed shoes, right? So your feet are the same color as you what? My skin. As your skin, right? Read on. As if they burn in a furnace. Now, if you burn something, what well, you get darker. Now, go to uh, Daniel 10. The reason why we're going to Daniel 10 because it says one particular word that you cannot refute. Watch this, Daniel 10 and 5. Watch this. The book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. And this is the description of the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Read. Then I lift up my eyes and look and behold a certain man clothed in linen, uh -huh. whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphrates. We just read about the same description in Revelation 1. Read. His body also like the burrow, uh -huh. and his face as the appearance of lightning. So he had an aura, all right? A big aura around him. So you know that was the Messiah. Read. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Lamps of fire, red, just like it said in Genesis 49 in Revelation 1. Read. And his arms and his feet. Wait, wait, wait. And his arms and what? And his feet. So his arms and his feet. Read. Like in color. Like in what? In color. One more time. In color. Read. To polish bread. So there is no argument. That's right. Jesus Christ, the Messiah of the Israelites, is a black man. That's, That's right. right. Hello, I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.